Hi guys, welcome to I Hate Math Group. In this video, we're going to learn the capital asset pricing model. So let's say that you have millions of dollars and you want to make an investment. Well, today is your lucky day because Billy, your neighbor down the street, wants to start a new business. He actually wants to do a lemon stand and he asks you for some money. You want to give him the money, but you need to determine the required rate of return. Well, today we're going to learn how to do it. First of all, we need to remember that the capital asset price model is a model that represents the relationship between risk and return. Remember, since you're an investor, you're going to have the time value of money plus risk that you're going to be lending to your neighbor, Billy. So we need to make sure we, uh, you know, we tell him, look, this is how much money I want back from my investment. How do we determine that? The security market line is part of this model and basically is going to give us the best required rate of return. How do we do that? Well, this is the formula to find the required rate of return. You're going to have several concepts. So let's see. You're going to have the RE, which is the required rate of return, equals to RF, which is the risk-free rate. This is the rate that you will get from the U.S. Treasury bill because remember, this comes from the government. It's supposed to have no risk, but you still have the expected market return and the beta. Beta is, is going to determine how risky it is the project. Remember, in other videos, we learned that beta is just basically a standard deviation. The higher is the better, the more risk you're going to have. This is why when we do the security market line, you're going to have in this axis, which this is the Y axis, the required rate of return, and on the X axis, you're going to have the beta, which is the risk. The more you move, okay, these are like the possible combinations. The higher the beta, of course, the more risk, the higher the return you're going to have. So, in our case, we're going to also have the risk-free rate here, which this happens when I have no risk. Literally, this is when beta is equal to zero. So, that's actually the y-intercept. But let's do a problem with some numbers to understand it. So, Billy gets everything together and he tells you that the T-bills is 3%. Then he tells you that the expected market return is 10% and the beta is 2. So now you're ready to do the required rate of return. Literally, you just plug it. RF is 3, RM is 10, RF is 3 again. And look, I'm just putting it with percents, which is fine, as long as you keep your answer with percents. First, you do 10 minus 3 is 7, 7 times 2 is 14. Finally, I get my required rate of return. You can actually plug it here and look, once you have this, I can actually put it on my security market line and this is basically the optimal point for you. Remember, the higher the beta, the more risk. So if the market gets a little bit more volatile, what's going to happen? Well, look, you're actually going to have a higher uh, rate of return because since there's more risk, you want to make sure you get your money back. And these are the important points to remember. Risk-free is determined by the U.S. Treasury bills. Those are government bonds. Supposedly, they have no risk. Obviously, you know, they have some risk, but they are going to have less risk than any other stock. The higher the value of beta, the more volatile is the market. Remember, if beta is equal to 1, it's just exactly as the market. But the higher, the better, you're going to have, like, you know, more risk. Finally, what happened with Billy? He just made it big. Please don't forget to watch our other videos. Also, thanks so much for learning.